I want you to tell them what you just told me. I want you to tell them what you just told me. So he ran into the pantry door, 100 miles an hour, because he wanted a vanilla wafer. He can't have any more vanilla wafers. Mommy put them up. But he ended up running into the pantry door, 100 miles an hour. Looks at me and goes, what would make it feel better? I get cookie. Make in yeah, so a cookie would just automatically take all the pain away. Look at that, y'all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. Dude. These kids, like kids are, they have to, be, people say kids are resilient. I, I swear, it's like God, he had to make them that way or they would not survive. Because let me tell you something, if I ran as hard as he just did into that door, t call, the, call 911. Put me on a stretcher. Have me checked out. Something's wrong. I damaged something permanently because when I say it was a hundred miles an hour, I mean I did not know he could run that fast, and he just right into the door. But apparently, if he gets a cookie, he'll feel better. Things these kids come up with. Okay, we're gonna finish this vlog out here. It is six. 58 in the morning and I am completely ready because I've been up since 4.30. But I'm out on the porch. Look how cute these are. I found them online at Walmart. My local Walmart did not have these so I had them shipped. They're like a felt material. I don't know what that is. But I put them out on the back porch and I am obsessed with them. They're so cute and the size is perfect. But anyway, uh, so I've been up since 4.30, could not sleep. And it's seven now and everyone's gonna start getting up soon. So I figured I'd close this vlog out. Yesterday was one of the hard, no, it was the hardest day I've had since becoming a mother. Um, Ezra is not a bad kid and I hate that term. I hate the term bad baby, bad kid. I don't think kids are inherently bad. <laughs> like not young kids. I think that you can have behavior issues as they get older, but like he's just an easy kid, but he's always been a little bit spry and gremlin. Like I joke and call them gremlins. Yesterday, he was straight up for the first time in his life mean. And I remember looking at him, maybe three or four o'clock, and I went, who are you? What have you done to my child? Like, where is my son Ezra that I've known for the last two and a half years? And he is doing this thing now where he's just, he's testing boundaries with a couple different things in life. And one of them is this passy. We had to get rid of the passy. Um, we have moved on. He used to get it pretty much whatever he wanted. And we have slowly started taking it away during the day. So he only gets it when he sleeps. Problem is he has reached a point where he's noticing that we are taking it from him and he only gets it when he sleeps. So he's real angry and irritated until he finds a passy and then he calms down. So as soon as I notice the mood shift in him when he had a passy versus when he did it at two and a half, it's gone. It's got to go. Um, we're not going to continue to have a bad attitude because we want a passy. And I will fight through this, whatever. The other thing is his teeth. And I know that everyone has said like his teeth are going to be fine. Um, I, I had a lot of messages yesterday because I had a full breakdown on Instagram of people saying, listen, his teeth are going to go back. It's going to be fine. But, and then there were like a multiple, multiple, multiple women that were like, you need to take it from him ASAP because... I wish I would have done it sooner because my kid had a lot of oral problems. There was one woman who let her daughter, I might be con I might be adding like two stories together, but I wanna say, I think she said her daughter had her passy till three, three and a half, and she's now spent thousands on oral surgery. Her daughter has uh, so many issues. And Sam, truthfully, has so many dental problems. He had braces for like six years straight. It might've even been more. 
um, might have been eight years. And so Ezra's kind of predisposition to that. Um, and, and it's pretty much the same for everyone in Sam's family, like his younger brother. They don't do braces like straight through now, at least in my experience from what I've seen. Now they kind of do a start stop thing. So like his younger brother like got spacers in his mouth for six months and they took him off for six months. Then he had something else for six months and they took him off for six months. And it's, I don't even think he has actual braces yet. He might, but I, knowing what I know about Sam's dental issues and the teeth starting to bow out, I was like, they gotta go. So yesterday was just rough. I cried so much yesterday. Now my period is definitely a contender here as far as the overwhelming amount of tears. Like I don't usually cry at all, much less that much over a bad day with my kids. But I was just a sop fest yesterday and he just was lashing out and being so mean to me and to Roman. And I was like, listen, like I'm your mom. You know, I, I understand you have big feelings and I can take it and teach you and whatever, but you, you can't be like that with your brother. So we struggled from the moment we woke up until we went to bed last night with him. I just did not, I, don't know, I didn't expect it. So anyways, I got some great tips from people. We're gonna try a couple different things, but yesterday we decided to, and by we, I mean me, decided to remove the passy from nap times. So we are in the transition phase. This is gonna be a two to three day process. Um, and this weekend, the passy will go at nighttime. And if we have a couple bad days, we have a couple bad days. If it's a couple bad weeks, it's a couple bad weeks, whatever. I don't know, but it's gotta go. And let this be your, your kick, mama. If you have a kid who is almost two, just go ahead and get rid of it. <laughs> because Roman doesn't depend on the passy as much as Ezra. And we're already like, maybe we go ahead and get rid of Roman's passy in the new year. Like it, it is so hard once they get to the point of independence and understanding things and being able to voice that to then take it away like i wish i would have just done it sooner but his pediatrician wasn't concerned she at his two-year appointment and i trust her so much like whatever she says i'm gonna follow um because she's amazing she said i don't mind the passy at two as long as it's not impacting their speech and i remember she pulled the passy out and started talking to ezra and they talked for a couple minutes and she handed it back and she was like yeah, um, no, he can keep the passy because that's fine. Because he has a younger brother who has passy, so they're all over the house. And she was like, his speech is super advanced. Um, it's it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it till three. And when I saw her the other day for Roe, I was like, it's got to go. He's two and a half. It's got to go. And she was like, okay. So she gave me some tips. Um, but that's kind of why we waited. Because originally she wasn't concerned with it until three because his speech was good. But I wish... She would have been like, you know, I really kind of think it should be gone already because I would have gone home and been focused on it then. But ah, two and a half, it's an age. It is, it is an age. That I'll tell you. So anyways, I'm going to close this vlog out or lack thereof. I think you guys got one clip of me yesterday, like getting their milk ready. And by the time I went and got the boys, I knew. I just had, a, I, I knew it was going to be rough. I didn't know it was going to be that rough. Say a prayer for me. If you have a vlog tomorrow today went great if you don't have a vlog tomorrow you know that this day went terribly and i probably cried again <laughs> love you guys <laughs> take your passies from your almost two-year-olds it's not worth it